I'd like to thank the SAGES uh, organizing committee for giving me the honor to speak to you guys. Uh, and uh, i also like to thank them to make me follow Yuri so that uh, I've already lost the debate to a certain extent, which explains why I lost my hair. Um, so what is the problem with the biologics? One, the, we have been quoted that the recurrence rates with biologics are higher than synthetics. And the main problem that we encounter with the biologics is the cost of it. And thirdly, there is not real evidence that the biologics are really that great. How expensive? My nurses always quote me this, you're putting in a car inside the patient. That's how much it costs in St. John. You can buy a Chevy Spark with that. And where am I? I'm in St. John. It's one of the Atlantic provinces. Uh, we border Maine. It's about a seven hour drive north from here. And this is where I work, in a little hospital. Uh, we serve a population of 70,000 immediately, but almost all the complex patients in the province come to us because we are the only tertiary care center in the province. It's a beautiful area, sailing, and those of you sail know that we use Dacron for sails, which stop I use for hernia repair. You can walk off the house and go sailing. That's how nice it is. But it also produced one of the premier surgeons in MASH, Hawkeye Pierce. Donald Sutherland is from St. John, New Brunswick. But it's also a great area to farm hernias. As you can see in the figures from 2014, we have among the highest rates of diabetes, COPD, obesity, and smoking in the country. So it's a fertile population. So why do we use synthetic, and why is there a favor of using synthetic rather than biologics? Or what was the original idea of moving to biologic? We had patients with infected mesh, and they came back infected again and again, and so maybe we needed to change the mesh and decided we would go to biologics. So is there a case for synthetic mesh? Yuri has eloquently put up his numbers. Uh, Dr. Carbonell had published a paper back in 2013 where they used synthetic, lightweight synthetic mesh in clean contaminated and contaminated patients. They studied about 100 patients. Their surgical site occurrence was 31%. Site infection was 11%. They removed mesh in about 4% of patients. One year recurrence rate was about 7% and they achieved facial closure in 91%. Extremely good numbers. We are quite happy with that, if we can reproduce that in all our patients. But what are the drawbacks of that study? And if you follow the article, um, there were correspondents from Dr. Brambard, Martindale, and Liang, and they pointed out appropriately that only clean contaminated and contaminated cases were done. No dirty cases were done in the study. These surgeons also had similar explantation rates of 5.1% with recurrence rates of 7.1% when they used lightweight polypropylene, but they had zero recurrence and zero explantation with biologics in their experience. So surgeon experience does come into play when we are dealing with some of these difficult cases. Eventually, Dr. Carbonell published another article in 2015 where they noted that Using lightweight polypropylene mesh in retrorectus repairs are not as good as what we thought it was. There are significantly higher recurrence rate. There is mesh failure with lightweight uh, meshes compared to medium weight, but we have not really studied medium weight in infected fields either. What about the cost? Is there a cost for infected mesh? Todd Hanford's group from uh, Carolina says, quoted these numbers and they've presented this in the American College of Surgeons that per patient the cost goes up to about $107,000. It's about $44,000 in hospital cost and $63,000 out of hospital cost. Now I cannot quote Canadian numbers because being a single payer system it is a bit difficult to try to work out these details. This is the best cost numbers that I can come up with. Many a times, the studies with synthetic are compared with the RICH study. The RICH study was one of the premier studies where they looked at biologics. They looked at 80 patients who went through repair. They used dirty patients as well, or dirty patients were included in their study. 
16 patients out of the 80 did not have their midline resort. Remember, Alfie's study showed 91 patients, 91% of their patients had midline resort. Their wound complications were 53%, including seromas. They did not have to intervene. There was no explantation of mesh, but unfortunately, there was 28% of recurrence, which is what a lot of synthetic studies compare against, say, biologics, there's a 28% recurrence rate. But going back, we have to remember that 20% of the patients, 16 patients, did not have midline closure. So looked up the literature, looked at meta-analysis or systemic reviews, but the problem is there's really no real randomized trials to evaluate properly. Slater did a systematic review, and he said the and his findings were 4.9 percent of explantation rates. There was a high salvage rate in infected cases. Recurrence depended on wound class. Overall recurrence rate was about 13.8 percent. And again, wound infection does play a part in recurrence, with dirty repairs having a higher recurrence rate. More recently, in 2014, Dareshki produced a, uh, published a meta-analysis, and they also found that biological graphs had significantly fewer wound infections, and wound infections do cost money. Recurrence rates are no different from non-biologics. Recently, Mike Liang's group uh, published uh, in Journal of Surgical Research where they reviewed retrospectively all the ventral hernias done in a multi-center database. They looked at primary outcome of surgical site infections and secondary uh, outcome of recurrence. They favored biological in contaminated repair, albeit there was no statistical significance they could find with, with the data. So we always say this, we need to balance risk, cost, and benefit. From my reading, there's really no evidence or no convincing evidence to support or completely debunk the use of biologics at this moment. But like I said, biologics are expensive. My nurse Tabitha, every time I am operating on one of these cases, says, you know, you're putting in a car, I could buy a car with that amount of money. So how do I base my decisions on? I'll give you an example. I had a 60-year-old gentleman who had a right hemicolectomy for carcinoma of the cecum, went on to develop a hernia. One of my colleagues had uh, done a polypropylene repair, got infected, six to eight months later of dressings and couldn't deal with it, had to explant the mesh. So my colleague went ahead, explanted the mesh, re-repaired with another polypropylene mesh, lightweight. Now the patient goes on to develop another infection, develops an antracutinous fistula, he's got this foul-smelling discharge, he's become a social recluse because of the smell, he's depressed, and his wife has become the advocate for him now. And you know what it's going to be like in a room where the wife is the advocate for the patient. Are you going to tell them? Yeah, I'm going to do the same repair. I'm going to take the mesh out, repair your bowel. I'm going to put the same mesh. What do you think that conversation is going to go like? So I chose to repair this gentleman to biologic. That was four years ago. Managed to close the midline. There's no recurrence, no infection. In fact, this is the best four years they have noticed in the past two to three years that they had been suffering prior to that. And the wife is happy. So every time she comes to visit, I'm the best person in the world. It does a lot of good for my ego. Okay? So do biologic measures have a role in complex patients? Honestly, with the data today, I'm not sure, but I do favor them in certain cases. But I think we have to understand that Neither the biologics or the synthetics are the holy grail of everything. That we need to evaluate all the evidence we have, but ultimately, when you're sitting in the room with your patient, you need to use your own judgment in individualizing the treatment for our patient. Thank you for the honor for addressing you guys. And this is not sailing into the sunset, but sailing, sailing towards the light as to what we should do. And happy St. Patrick's Day for tomorrow. Thank you.